Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I am Brett Papa, and thank you for joining me. And today is going to be kind of a continuation of the last lesson where we talked about two notes that could radically improve. improve. <laughs> but eep, but eep, that's all, folks, your blues rock phrasing. And there's going to be a jam track down below in the description box. This jam track I played over will be available to you. And also, don't forget to subscribe click the bell and if you like this video hit the like button and by all means whoosh, share that thing with your friends because you know the saying sharing is caring so oh gotta have some coffee okay so we're starting and even though this is kind of a mixolydian ish jam track here let me turn this down a little bit so i don't blow up my freaking speakers here the way we're going to think about it is more of just mixing major and minor pentatonic. And what I mean by that is inside this A minor box, we're going to do two things. In the last lesson, we added the major third of the one chord. So just imagine this is an A minor pentatonic shape, right? Just imagine if you took this shape, which is technically what you'd play in an A minor progression, and you just superimpose that A major chord inside of it. Now, the only note that is gonna be different is this note right there, and that's the third of the A chord, okay? Now, that's also gonna happen here in position two, right? That's the minor version of the A minor chord, okay? The major version, we would just have to move this note right here, which is the third again, and it would give us more of this D shape. Okay, my guitar's a little out of tune, sorry. Close enough for rock and roll. Okay, and in this shape, think of an A minor chord. This is position four. And all you have to do is basically flatten this finger to give yourself an A chord, okay? So what that means is you can do cool licks like this. Okay, so what that does is it takes that kind of minor rock sound because this is this technically you could have it be like a very major sounding progression, right? Kind of hippie jam band ish kind of a thing. But if you're familiar with more minor pentatonic, this is kind of the gateway drug into getting into mixing major and minor pentatonic. You're just adding an element of the major sound into it, right? So if I did rather than going which is a very minor lick. If I went for a split second, it gets us into that happy mode, okay? We're like, oh, that's kind of nice. I feel suddenly I was like in the middle of the doldrums and a, and a ray of light came in and just blew my mind open, okay? So down here, you can do that sort of a thing, right? And, and it's in all these positions. So what I would do is take this note, and say, okay, what note is that? Okay, that's a, yeah, that, okay, that's a C sharp note, right? So find that all over your fretboard, okay? One, number two, or that was one. This is two, was the blues note. Okay, so the cool thing about that is now you can get both of those in there, right? And it's a cool lick. You can, or, right? You can do some stuff like that. So now one other thing that you can think about, and that, that's here, right? You can also expand your, your big pentatonic shape, right? Now that's one way to do it. And I'm just blowing through these licks just to kind of put it out there and then I'll, I'll come back to them, right? Okay, so you can also do it if you want that kind of mixolydian sound, you can add that to your scale, right? Because remember the, the predominant sound of this progression, right? A, G, D with an F sharp in the bass. Okay, it's that like happy, like it's rock and major at the same time. Okay, so those are the first points, right? Major third of the one chord inside your minor pentatonic shapes all over the neck, okay? 
Then the blues note, that's another thing that you can add. Third, you know, sometimes it's cool just to fill in the blanks, right? And what I mean by that is in between these notes, it's kind of cool though. Okay, so what I did is I just chromatically climbed up, but I stayed inside the framework. Okay, so this is five, six, seven. Okay, now what that does is for me, I'm an 80s guy and I learned all my speed for three notes per string. And once these like Eric Johnson and Eric Gales bastards came on the scene and did everything with two notes per string, I was like, what? WTF? Like, how is that even possible? Like, I just physically, even when I cheat with hybrid picking, cannot play that fast yet. I'm trying, right? I'm trying to work up my speed. But what I can still do is play three notes per string quicker. Now, that doesn't give you license to just shred everywhere because we want to we want to adhere to the chords, right? Because that's what's gonna make this thing sound cool is playing to the chords, right? So with that, we can just add color with chromaticisms. Right, same thing here. Okay, so I did the same thing here. And it gives us an element of speed and flash, right? That you don't have to be so concerned about. You can blow through those notes and you don't have to be like, oh man, am I hitting chord tones? No, sometimes you just flash to one spot to another and then you jump back into the chord tones. Okay, so that brings me to Let's try to see where these chords are in our shapes, right? So we want to be able to actually play melodically if, you know, we're like, okay, I got to have a melody. I can't just shred, right? <laughs> so what you got to do is you got to see those chords in your scale. Okay, so in this first box, we have an A chord right here. Okay. We have a G chord right here. That kind of D shape. Remember I said you had an A chord right here? Just move that down a whole step. Our D's right here. Right, so the progression. So when I'm playing that A stuff, that right there. There's that G, and if I come to here, right? Now that's when the mixing of major minor starts to happen. But if you don't think about it as, you know, mixing two scales together, that can be kind of like, oh God, I gotta, th okay, wait, how do these wind up together? And I am gonna show you that. I do have some documentation to help you visualize how the scales come together, but, and I'll give you that in the next lesson because we're gonna get into major and minor pentatonic. But for now, you can use the cheat code of seeing the chords. So we had that D. So we got. Okay, so if we just played the, the note. And then. Now, you see how that's a whole different ball game, right? That becomes melody, right? So you, if you got the shred, right? We added those two notes that give you the opportunity to add some flash, some three note per strings, you add the chromaticism in there. But the real important part that's gonna snare people is really the notes you hang on and the melody you create, right? Neil Sean's a perfect example of that. Like, if you don't, and some people I say journey, they're like, oh, journey, whatever. Go back and listen to the Departure album Journey's Departure album, in my opinion, is some of the greatest blues rock phrasing of all time because it perfectly blends blues licks and flash with unforgettable melodies. His vibrato, his timing, everything about it is like textbook perfection when it tone too, just wicked tone, right? 
But it's that perfect example, you know, also ACDC, right? I mean, a lot of times in the 80s, Angus got overlooked. Yeah, he's in a huge band, so he's a guitar star. But listen to what he plays. I mean, it's like perfect chord tone melodies going along with killer blues rock phrasing, right? So if you think about those notes. We're back to, I'm sorry, I missed a chord. There we go, in the back here, okay? Now also think about that on the way down. So you have this, right? And then we have a G. So look at this G chord right here, okay? So we got, right, so those notes. Okay, now the cool thing is if you look at these two notes, let's take, let's take four notes, right? and we're gonna hit every single chord tone with that. Now I'll mix them up with some other notes, but let's focus on four notes for this kind of like low growling kind of thing, right? Now remember, we have an octave, so I'm gonna say four notes, but I can move because there's an octave here, right? So check this out. That works for the A and the D, okay? So think of a D chord, think of an A chord, okay? Now we have this note here, part of our, okay? We got this note here, that's part of our, and then this note here, part of our D. So. Right, that, this also leads into this chord. Okay, so we got and then we got Okay, so when I'm doing that low stuff All these notes, right? You're you're just reiterating those chord tones. Four notes. Okay, so A, G, D. Back to G. Right? Even that climb. G note. G note and then back home to the A. Okay, and then I wanna get back out of that. I'm like, okay, where do I go from there, right? So it comes back to the A, so I wanna concentrate on, okay, let's, this is an A major chord. Okay, and that's why that major third really works in this progression, right? Because we're hitting that. It's the only note that's different between major and minor. Yes, you can get away with these licks, but if you add, then that's a blues lick, right? It's basically like going. But when you go. It's saying A major. So it's like that quick little ear twister. It's like, ooh, what was that? <laughs> that was cool, right? So then you can go back to down here. Okay, remember I said there's a G right here. So when I went. and tweak that note, it did two things, right? So we got this bent me into that major. I went. Now the very act of doing this, check this out. G, the next chord is D. We have a D right there, right? That's the E shape of this chord. So, so when I did that, I'm using that familiar shape, right? The minor shape, but I'm hitting D, G, D. These aren't the notes, right? These are the chords I'm saying. And then back to A. Right, so it's all minor, but with that little major tweak in there, okay? And so that's why we're 
throwing in that major third because it gives us that, ah, it's, it's, that, it's very ACDC, right? It's that kind of thing that was just synonymous in the 80s where they were really good at making something sound tough, but sneaking in enough major to where it's like, oh, that's, that's really cool, right? So the next pass around, I wanna do something a little bit different. I wanna go to major land, okay? And so if you think about this chord, this is our A chord. Remember I said we had an A chord? Anytime you see this shape, right, your A major chord or whatever the chord is, with this D shape, you can bet your bottom dollar that position four of major pentatonic is right there. Okay, All right? <laughs> I know I should stop and tune, but I'm just, I can't, right? Okay, so here we go. So when you go back to. That's why those licks start to sound really good because you're in that major mode. This is the root, so it's gonna sound awesome. Pay attention to when you bend. Where are you bending to, okay? So if I'm over an A chord. That sounds great because I'm actually bending into this A chord. Okay. If you think about it, this A chord. So when you go. You're basically making an A chord, right? So also doing this right there. You got a G right here. So check that out, A. Now when I bent that really high note. Think about where that's taking us. Okay. I went to G, right? And then I came back, which can be my A chord or my D chord, right? So A, it's my root when it's the A. It's the fifth of the D, okay? Now, when you go to that G, think about that lick. It's bending into the G, right? But there's also a G here, so this is your root. All right, so back to here. Now we have A, G, D. Okay, so D. If here, right? So this is this, think about the A chord. If I bend, I'm bending into the A here. If I do that, I'm bending a half step to get to that third. D. Back to A. Okay, now that's all to show you how to do the melody, but when you combine that, right, That's that. You can get back into that sound. So after you add your flash, you know where you can at least target something that's gonna be a very pronounced, like, we're back, right? So, think about that. Here's my A chord. So, right into that major third, here's our A chord.
So it all just depends how you, you know, this is my phrasing, right? This is how I like to do it. It's very influenced by, you know, the Van Halens and I love David Gilmour and all these guys that are, they're exceptional blues players, Neil Sean for sure. If I could play like any, I mean, Van Halen's my favorite band ever, hands down. But if I could play like anybody, it would be more like a Neil Sean because it's that, I love blues, but not like, you know, well, I like Chicago blues and all that stuff. So don't get me wrong when I say this, but I like freaking pissed off ripping blues like Neil Sean, like Eddie Van Halen, like Frank Marino, Stevie Ray Vaughan, aggressive sounding blues, right? But I also love that melody. And so when you want to create that melody and just have a little bit of a departure, <laughs> I like that snuck it back in there. I'm going to make you listen to that album. But if you want to get a little bit of a departure from just blues licks, throwing those chord tones inside of it is a good way to do that because it breaks you out of the shape of the scale and makes you pay attention more to the notes of the chords. And that's, my friends, where the magic's at. So don't forget to subscribe, click the bell to be notified, hit the like button, and share the video if you liked it. And the jam track for this is down below in the description box. So make sure you grab that so you can have some application to your jamming. So that's what I wanna stress. Jam to something, right? Make the licks that you got start to mean something by learning what you are doing, right? Learn to, when I'm bending, why am I bending? Am I bending just because I know I can bend there or am I bending there because there's a chord that I'm bending to? Make your licks have purpose. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the continued support. And if you wanna support the cause, go to brettpapa.com down below. I got tons of courses like this. There's a subscription site that's gonna be killer. Everybody that's been waiting for that Hendrix course, it's down in the subscription site right now. It's being built. So if you guys like Hendrix, check that out. All right, we'll catch you next time.